everybody, Lori here from Unique in the Creek. And today I want to show you um, a bunch of petal folds. This is my most asked question all the time, is the different petal folds. Um, now we as Creekers have named petals um, only for the simple reason that when we name them, it's much easier to help others with what they're trying to achieve if they can refer to a certain petal. So when we name them, if they say, I'd like to learn the Rita petal, we know exactly what they're talking about. Okay, so I have quite a list to go through and I have put um, a little piece of paper with every uh, petal name that I'm going to be doing. And so with this video, you can stop you can rewind, you can rot, watch whatever pedal you want um, qu quite easily and play, uh, practice along with me as we go through each pedal. Okay, so hopefully this will be simplified and really help you, okay? So some of the pedals do require um, these little bitty elastics or rubber bands, they're called. Um, I just purchased these at the dollar store. Dollar Tree has them. They're in this hair section, um, and you get 500 of them for a dollar. So every time I go to Dollar Tree, I always collect a couple packages, and I have a whole drawer full. <laughs> um, so next time you go to Dollar Tree, grab a pack, because they're really, really handy to have, especially if you want to pre-make your petals and then you can just zoom them all into the board and you get done really quick. Okay, so there is a few petals that require these bands and I will let you know um, throughout this tutorial which ones do. Okay, so the very first one we are gonna start with is the sunflower petal. It's a basic, basic petal. And usually this actual petal fold we use for the green leaves going around the outside of the flowers. Any of these petal folds you can use um, in combination with each, with each other to make you know different and unique types of flowers. Um, you can use any petal fold you want for green leaves going around the outside. It is totally up to you. I'm just gonna go through each petal and demonstrate how you fold them, okay? I'm not making flowers or anything, just how you do the fold. So the first one I'm doing is, we just call it the sunflower petal. It's basic, like I said, and this is the fold I always use with the green leaves. So I'm just gonna be, for the whole tutorial, I'm just gonna be using this orange deco mesh. It's a wide foil deco mesh. I just think you can see it much better on the blue with the, with the orange, okay? Um, all of these petals are cut 10 by 10, unless I indicate to you otherwise. Um, however, saying that, this particular sunflower green leaves petal, if you're running low, you can use 9 by 10 and you will not know the difference. Nobody will know the difference except you will um, make your mesh last a little longer. It'll, you know, that one inch, sometimes when you only have a half a roll, that one inch may make a difference on finishing your flower. Okay, but for this whole demonstration purposes, I've cut everything 10 by 10. And, and, like, and I don't think there's any that I have that are not 10 by 10. Okay, so let's start with this first one. So for the first one, for this sunflower green leaves petal, we got it 10 by 10. You're gonna put the petal curl down. Now notice all mesh will have a curl to it. Okay, so this would be curl up, and it looks like a U. This petal we're gonna do curl down. You're gonna form it into a diamond shape, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrunch from the bottom corner up to the top corner, okay? And scrunching means between your thumb and your forefinger. So thumb and your forefinger here. and. Scrunching is like an accordion type thing you will do. So, you're gonna scrunch. See how I'm pinching it between my thumb? Actually, more than just one finger. You could just do it like this, but 
and it's making like a pleat effect. See that? One, two, three, four. When you open it up, you can see all these pleats all the way to the end, okay? And then when you go to put your petal in like this, you're going to flip it up and you'll see that there's a curved side here. And what I do is I just kind of push it down to make sure each of them are uh, the same size. And if you're using these for a lead, you would use row one. You would take your zip tie, go through row one, put this curved part of the petal on top of the board and zip tie in between the mesh, just like that. So if you were using green, this would give you your leave, okay? So you would do eight of them all the way around and that will give your leave effect. If you're using it for the actual flower itself, again, we'll do that again. Scrunch, now I like to make sure the corners are facing down towards the table. That means the curve of the petal will go towards the door and hide some of the fray on the outside. So we're scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. So even ending, I have the corner facing down. Flip. Now you're gonna take this corner, or this rounded piece, or curved piece, or the middle piece where you've pinched, and you're just gonna insert it about a half an inch into your preloaded zip tie and pull tight. There you go. That is the easiest sunflower petal that we have. Um, okay, so that is one flower petal, the sunflower leaf petal. Okay, the next petal we're gonna go on to is called the Dean Michael petal. This is a very, very popular petal and it was first shown by uh, Dean Michael Designs. So to do the Dean Michael petal, I'll just move this over so you guys know what we're doing. Again, we have a 10 by 10 piece. We have it curved up this time. And what you're gonna do is put it in a diamond shape, bring this top corner to meet the bottom corner. Okay, and we're gonna make sure that our edges are lined up. Now this is frequently done with a poly burlap. Okay, and you wanna flatten it out and make sure everything's lined up because this petal looks best when it looks like one uniform petal. Actually, I have a piece of similar poly burlap. I will use that, it's yellow. So again, I'm gonna bring this down, okay? Matched it up, the edges are nice and matched. You can flatten it out, okay? And what you're gonna do now is, I, when I do this petal, I like to start in the middle and scrunch this way, and then from the middle, scrunch this way. So what you're gonna do is, I scrunch it first in the middle, and the main thing for this one is you wanna make sure that this looks like one uniform piece. Okay, and now we're scrunching where the folded edge is. So scrunch, 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 and then we're gonna do it the same on the other side. Now there's different ways this is, can be done, but this is the easiest way. So as you can see, it's a really nice petal. It's one uniform look. Okay, and it's best done with poly burlap. You can do it with other mesh, but the most popular use for it is poly burlap. Now you would take the petal and you put the edge into your zip tie, tighten it, and there you have the Dean Michael petal fold. Okay, see how it looks like one solid piece. It's really pretty. And I can't get this zoomed any closer. Sorry guys. Okay, 
That's the Dean Michael. Next one, we have the 3D Sunflower Petal. Okay, this one's kind of a new one, and I'll use this yellow again. So for this petal, you're going to cut 10 by 10 again. However, what you're going to do is we're going to cut this in half again. So you're going to find some, a straight edge, so something with a straight edge, and place your straight edge from corner to corner, okay, right along each corner. This is also called the barber petal. So you will also find it referred to as the barber petal. But it does make, when you do all the petals like this, it makes almost like a 3D petal. And it's also used for the lotus flower. And you'll find a lot of the petals um, are used in combination to make other different flowers. Okay, so we've cut it in half. Okay, so we have two petals. Now what you're going to do is for this petal, we're going to use it with the curl up and it's a triangle and I just stretch it in the middle here and I'm making like a crease or almost like the vein of a uh, flower or a leaf like this. And when you use poly burlap, Poly burlap likes to behave itself and it usually take, keeps its form. And now what you're going to do is you're going to, like the Dean Michael, you're going to scrunch this way. Okay, and I just kind of wrap that little corner there. And then I'm going to scrunch this way and wrap the corner. And when you do it like that, you can see from the side that it's like a cupped sunflower. So when you do go to put it on your board, now you do need a quite a few of these. So there is, if you like this petal and you wanna make a flower with it, we do have tutorials on how to do it. You're gonna put the end of this into your zip tie and pull your zip tie tight. Now I only, when I do all my petals, I only go in about a half an inch through the zip tie. And also I want to mention, if you feel more comfortable, you can add some hot glue from the board right across the bottom of your petal to the board. That gives it extra security that the petals won't fall off on your customer. Okay, so as you can see, it's got a nice, curve to it so when you do all your petals you do really get that 3d effect because it curls out another way for the 3d barber petal is when you do do this crease like this if you want that vein like a real flower if you want to really see that vein what you can do before you make the petal is once you make that crease you can put just a little bit of hot glue in between the mesh here on the back side and just kind of hold it for a sec. You only need a little bit more up to near the top here. So you wouldn't do it, well I guess you could do it down at the bottom, but it would flatten out. So if you bring it more to about three quarters of the way up, just put a little bit of glue here without burning yourself and just hold it. When you do the scrunch, no, I didn't plug in my hot glue. I probably should have. Anyways, if that was glued, that seam or that vein for the petal, you would see. Now you'd probably want to do this more towards the inside. Um, if you don't, if you do it too low on your outside petals, you're not going to see the vein. So. To save time, you can do row two and possibly three, just like this one, and save yourself some time, and then do row four and five with the glue, if you like the vein, okay? And then again, you would just slide it in like you did the other one and pull it tight, okay? That is the Barbara petal, and it makes a gorgeous 3D petal. Now all of these 
do not have to be. So if I say 3D sunflower, you most definitely can use any other color, okay? Um, this would be pr beautiful as a pink flower or a purple one. Um, play around with it. It doesn't, all these petals, if they say sunflower or something, they don't have to be yellow. You can make a brand new flower with any, any of these petals. Okay, so, oh, and that was the, I forgot to put my thing in there. That was the 3D Sunflower, uh, and otherwise known as the Barbara Petal. Okay, next we're going to do the Rita Petal. Now there is two ways to do the Rita Petal. There is um, a really easy way, especially if you're using, I'm gonna use Polly again. It seems to show up better on the camera. Um, if you're using multicolors and you've seen um, Rita McNally Cruz um, flowers that they look like a pinwheel and she uses three different colors or four different colors all the time and she keeps them going the same way. I'm going to show you first what the Rita flower is, or petal is um, full. Okay, so what you're going to do again, 10 by 10. Turn your mesh facing up towards you, so the curl is up. Put it in a diamond, go from corner down to corner. Again, making sure your edges are nice and even. This is a, a flower you would probably, or a petal you would probably want to, anything that shows the um, raw edge, you would probably want to heat seal or wood burn, okay? That prevents the mesh from fraying either any further. So the little um, strings that you see coming off, that's what we call fray. And what the burning does is kind of melts the ends, so it prevents further fray. Now it doesn't totally eradicate it, but it definitely does makes a big, big difference. So there's a lot of petals that we don't even bother wood burning because you don't see the raw edge. But there's some like the, the first three that we did that you probably would want to heat seal. Okay, so we want from corner to corner. Okay, just like that into a triangle. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrunch from the corner here right up the center. So, and I always, when I scrunch, I always make sure the corner or my starting point is always facing down towards the table. And you're gonna scrunch just like this between your fingers, making an accordion. Now, you don't wanna do this on a tablecloth or anything underneath because you'll start gathering your tablecloth, obviously. So do it on a flat surface, okay? And what you get is this kind of wing wing looking thing and then when you flip it up this is one of my favorite petals this is what you get okay very very easy it's beautiful makes a beautiful flower you can do it in any color and this is the full Rita petal okay and then what you would do is you would take the edge the rounded piece and just slide it into your zip tie Again, only about a half an inch in, pull tight, and then you just fix your petal. Okay, that is such a very pretty petal. Now, if you're doing multiple colors for the Rita flower, or this petal, um, what people do and what Rita does is she cuts, so these two petals are each its own entity, meaning she puts little zip ties on the bottom, so she, on the bottom of each petal, and then she'll cut in between and make it two separate petals. Um, for, for me, I like to save zip ties, and my little elastics come in handy to make this petal. So if I was doing this, and then I would, I'll do it in an orange as well, so you guys can see what I'm talking about as doing two different colors, or three different colors, or four different colors. You just do a pattern. 
what I like to do is I'll put a clothespin on one side and another clothespin on the other side. And I always have clothespins handy. Everybody knows that. Okay, so this is where Rita will put zip ties, where I put my clothespins. I'm going to take two elastic bands. They're much cheaper than clothespins. And I'm going to cut right in the middle here. If my scissors were sharper. <laughs> There, now we have two separate petals. Okay, I'm gonna do the same. Actually, I'll put the elastic. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these little elastic bands and I'm just gonna put it around the bottom of this petal. And there we go. So now I can put it to the side and use it when I need it. And this is called pre-making your petals. So you, with these little elastic bands, you can pre-make all your petals. And I do this a lot. I will sit in my recliner and pre-make all my petals for the flower I'm going to make, throw them into a grocery bag or, or, a, or a box or something, and then preload my board, and then I sit again in my recliner and I put all the petals in. So I actually make my flower right on my lap, usually watching TV or a movie or something. Okay, so we have two petals now. I'm going to do the same thing with this orange again. We are going to bring this down. Now, I did not heat seal this deco mesh. I just cut it with my rotary cutter. So you will see some fray. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna scrunch right up the center, just like that. So again, we have that full Read a petal, and you can see all the phrase starting because I didn't heat seal it. There's that full petal, and it you could just stick it right in like this. I actually did um, a denim country sunflower with this petal. It looks stunning. However, if you want to do the separate one so you can make a pattern with these petals, again, you're going to put your clothespins just like that. Get your scissors and you're going to snip in between. Just like that again. And take your elastic. Put it around the bottom. Just like that. And you have your pre-made flower or petal. We'll do the same for the other one. So we got two orange and two yellow. Now you just got to figure out when you're putting them in. Now you will have to, I'm not going to do the flower right now, but there is tutorials on our YouTube channel of how to do the whole read a flower. Um, you do have to use quite a bit of zip ties, so you have to use, it, and it also depends how full you want it. Um, you do have to use like from here to here. Um, on row two, you can get away with just putting two petals into one zip tie. So what I will do, I'll do these two so you can see the effect. And you just keep a pattern going. And you have to make sure, see this curved part? The curved part has to be going the same way for all of them. So you put, I'm going to say, your, I'm going to do orange and then yellow. So I'm going to put an orange and then I'm going to put a yellow. Zip it up. See how they're both going the same way. Alright, and then again on this one, I'm going to do an orange, make sure it's going the same way, and then a yellow, and zip it up. Look how pretty, and then you can move them around a bit. And you would do this for the whole flower. Again, like I said, from here to here, if you don't want to drill holes, 
You can watch the tutorial, but from here to here, I put a zip tie, and when I put the two pieces, I actually go over the two pieces with hot glue to make sure it doesn't come out of the zip tie. So that is the full and half Rita petal. Okay, very easy. One of my favorites, comes out so pretty, but you do have to heat seal your mesh to get the best results, okay? All right, so that is the Rita petal. Now we are going to do the star petal, star flower petal. Snip these off. And all of these petals, you will find full tutorials on how to make the actual flowers for them on my YouTube channel. Okay, the star flower. This petal is my favorite for doing like a beachy themed flower. I called it the star flower because it really reminds me of a starfish. Okay, just the way the petal goes and it's folded and everything. So again, you want a 10 by 10 piece, curl up, put it in a diamond. You're gonna take the, oh, I need to put my paper. Star flower, there we go. So when you guys go back to refer, you know what petal it is. Okay, curl up in a diamond shape. Take this corner to the bottom corner. A lot of the petals start like this. We're gonna line it up. And this time, what I'm gonna do is I kind of stretch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch, put my finger right on the corner bottom of the, the, the petal, and I kind of stretch it. And that is giving me an imaginary center line for myself. Then I'm gonna take, and I'm right-handed, so I always start on the right, I'm going to take this side and I'm gonna fold it down that imaginary center line just like that, okay? So, and then it helps when you do stretch it, it helps for the petal to go, like the fold to go right where you want it anyways. Okay, so that is the one side. The next side, see I'm not, I'm not, I usually turn it around so I can do it with my right hand because it's a bit awkward. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, I'm just gonna do it like I always do it. I, I kind of turn it to the side. I'm gonna take the left side now and I'm gonna bring it over. Now I'm not, I'm gonna bring it over a little bit so it overlaps this side that I just brought in. We're gonna overlap it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it back. So you bring that and fold it back and then scrunch at the bottom. Now. What happens is it gives it that little curve. The tip gives it a little curve. And when you start piling, or piling, start adding all of them onto your board, it starts to look like a starfish. It's really, really pretty. Um, my favorite mesh to use for this petal is fabric mesh or poly jute. Um, as you can see, deco mesh, like this kind of deco mesh, kind of has a mind of its own and likes to do its own thing. Um, Cause it's a very kind of thick plastic. Um, so you sometimes have to um, help it form the way you want it to form. So if I was making this flower using deco mesh, what I would do, let me put an elastic on the bottom of this so I can let it go. And I do have some fabric mesh here. I'll show you the difference. Okay, so if I was making this with deco mesh, I would probably take some a little bit of glue, just put a dab right here, and then just fold it back. That way, it stays folded back like you want it to stay. Now, if you use deco mesh for this flower, it is really, really pretty because you got the metallic um, stripes in it gorgeous but like I said it likes to do its own thing so you have to give it a little bit of help and hot glue always helps deco mesh and then what you will do is you'll put the tail of it in to your board and zip it up 
my fingers are not working today. Okay, and like I said, once you glue it, it'll stay like that. And you do the whole flower like that, it looks like a gorgeous starfish. Beautiful. Here is, some, I got some green fabric mesh here, and I'll show you with fabric mesh how it's a little bit different. So what you're gonna do again, curl up. I am gonna fold the corner to the corner. I don't know if this is a full 10 inch piece since I don't remember cutting it. Anyways, you wanna make sure the edges are all lined up. This obviously is not a 10 by 10 piece, but it'll work for demonstration. I'm going to stretch it. Again, bring my right side over and bring it right down that center line. Then I'm gonna bring this over, cross it right over, and then fold it back, and then scrunch it. See the difference? It'll stay like that. <laughs> Duckle mesh does not like to do what it's told, but it gives it that beautiful curb, and it stays folded back. So this, and you add this with the curve, that curve kind of going to the right to me when I look at it, you want the curve going all the same way when you make your flower. So make sure when you're folding it, they're all going to whatever side, you right or left, that you're uh, making it for. Okay, and then again, you would just place that tail in and zip it up. So with fabric mesh or poly jute, you don't have to give it, this one's staying not too bad, Still, if I was doing deco mesh, I would just put a little tiny dab of glue, put the glue on, and then just throw a clothespin on there so you don't uh, burn yourself. And then just keep moving the clothespin as you put your petals in, okay? And then keep making sure every petal that you put in that it's curving to the right, to the right side, okay? So that is the star flower petal. And I like to alternate colors. My favorite to do is like coral, um, natural color, and mint green, and alternate the three colors. Stunning. Or even throw a white in there. It's really, really pretty. Okay, so that is the star flower petal. And of course, I do have a tutorial on the full, on the full flower. Okay, the next one is the Star Trek. Now this one is very popular. I, however, have never done a full flower with it. There is many tutorials out there of the star flower. It is a lot of work and you use a lot of mesh. However, it's gorgeous when you're done because you can put different colors together. I'm just gonna show you the fold. Now, this Star Trek petal, I have used to make the big, huge, ginormous sunflowers. And it's the exact same fold as I'm gonna show you, except for 21 inch. So it would be 20, you would cut it by 21 by 21 and do the exact same fold I'm gonna show you. We are gonna do it with 10 by 10, okay? So you're gonna take, you're gonna curl up, take your corner, bring it down to the other corner then you're going to bring, make sure it's lined up. This one's not a very good piece. I cut these really fast. But for this one, it really doesn't matter because you're not gonna see any of the edges anyways. So what you're gonna do is now fold it right in half, okay? And you can probably see why we named it the Star Trek pedal <laughs> because if you're a Trekkie, you'll know this is like the Star Trek symbol. Okay, so as you can see, we're not going to see any raw edges. So you do not need to heat seal wood burn for this petal. And this petal kind of makes a small petal because what we're gonna do is what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring the edges in just like that. And it makes a petal that looks like that. Now you can, if you 
there's many ways that you can do this. So if you pinch it in the middle and then bring the two edges in, it makes it a little bit different. So you can see kind of a vein. If you just bring the two corners together, and put an elastic right there. You have a different looking petal. It's a, it's a little thinner. You could probably see why you would use a lot of mesh and a lot of petals because you're cutting most of it off. And people make the most gorgeous flowers with this, but there's, like I said, it's a lot of work and I find it's a lot of waste. So this petal is really, really pretty in combination with other petals. Meaning, so if I did rows two, three, and four with a Rita petal, and went in with row five with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Star Trek petals, and then put a little center in the on the flower, that would be really, really cool and you're not using so much, wasting so much mesh, and it wouldn't take you forever. With the Star Trek petal again, you are using all the holes plus the in-between holes. So, cause you gotta fill, you gotta make a lot of petals and fill this up. So, people that do do these flowers, all Star Trek flowers, petals, they do drill extra holes in the board. So what you can do then is you just put an elastic around it, you're gonna cut the end of it off, and then you will stick it in your zip tie and zip it up. Um, a lot of people make another petal just like this and make it a little smaller and put it inside so there's two different colors, so there's two colors to it. Let's see if I can do this. So if I had green, and I could put the orange, so they'll do something like that. And then you would just stick this whole thing in together, okay? And you wanna make sure, you, when you, if you are doing this, that your, your edges, the way your edges are, so you see there's a, an, um, this side is actually folded. In this side, you do see two pieces, when you're making your flower, make sure that these edges are all going the same way, okay? So, because you'll, it, it will make a difference, and you can see the difference when you're with the different meshes. So I folded this exactly the same, but using the fabric mesh makes it a bit wider than the deco mesh. You can see the difference. So you have to play around, if you really like this flower, play around with the petals. Uh, there's quite a few tutorials uh, on this, this petal. I know Rose Harvey from Rosie's Wreaths, she just did a fabulous tutorial on the Star Trek petal, so check that out, okay? So that's the Star Trek petal. Next, we have the Lolly petal. This, I made a beautiful purple flower and the last year, and I haven't done one since. Now, the lolly petal is folded. It's, it's, it can be used different ways. And my favorite way to use the lolly petal as well is to use 21 inch mesh. And the, when you use 21 inch mesh, it makes this ginormous petal. And you only need, I think, seven to make a big daisy on the small board. There is a tutorial for that on the on the Unique in the Creek YouTube channel. Um, but the lolly petal on the small or on the large board with 10 by 10 is really pretty. Again, you need to use quite a few pieces of mesh, but it does look really pretty. And for the lolly petal, you don't have to use really, really good quality mesh either because you're folding it up and then it kind of looks like a spoon. Um, it gives good coverage. So again, I'm gonna use this orange. Okay. 
Again, we're going to curl up. So I think most of our petals do start with curl up and in a diamond shape. We're going to bring this down. Okay. And now for the lolly petal to make it like um, a 3D spoon effect, what you do is you kind of turn this in and you'll bring it down to the corner. Now, when you do this, there's different ways to give the top a shape. So if I just roll it in and bring it down to the corner, roll this in and bring it down to the corner, you get more of a, I don't know if it's a more square shape um, than another way I'm going to show you to fold it. So that's one way you can do it. The other way is you roll it in and roll it again and bring it down and then roll, you want to make sure it's centered right there and roll it in and roll it in again and bring it down and this makes it a little bit more narrow Bray. a little bit more narrow so that's a different way that you can use it pinch right here pinch right here so it looks like that you can see how it's rounded already bring those two together now this is the lolly petal is very vague it's more having like almost like a spoon okay so there is many ways to do it so this is just one more other way you pinch right here so about the middle of where that curve is pinch right here bring this together now if you want a flat petal just bring the two sides just like that and you have a rounded, almost like a balloon type petal. Okay? Now that's if you want it flat. If you want it more spooned, all you have to do is push these pleats that you have, push them down, make sure your edge comes over more, and then form it that you have a spoon. So the lolly petals, you need to get used to and there's many ways to do it like I said this is my exact what I call the lolly petal in my video um, when I did the purple flower this is exactly how I did it and then I put an elastic around it just because there is so many pleats in it if you let go <laughs> it's a pain in the tootkiss to do again but it's a fun petal once you get used to it and if you're making a flower with the lolly petal you have to make sure you do the petal exactly all the way through the flower. So if you've committed to doing the lolly petal like this, like a spoon formation, then you need to do all the petals like that, okay? If you want to do them flat, let's do it again, corner to corner. I didn't cut these very good pinch, pinch, so you're kind of overlapping these two, do you see how I pinched it, and it's just about halfway between this curve here, I'm just making a pleat and a pleat, bringing it together, and if you just push this down and this down to overlap it, bring this around and bring this around you have a petal that's more like a balloon. And it looks a little better on the other side. So it's the same petal, it's just it's flat, it's not curved like a spoon. And I'm sure once you did practice with it, I haven't done a many, many of these at all, but you can see it's the exact same petal, it's just the way you've done your pleats. So personally, I like this one. It does make a beautiful flower. Just make sure if you're going to do this one or do this one, you commit to doing the whole thing like that. And because I think it'll look funny if you did combination of the two, it just lo will look like that you, um, you just didn't do it right. That's just totally my opinion, okay? 
And again, for 21 inch daisy, you would cut your mesh 21 by 21. You would fold it over, pleat it, bring the sides exactly like I just showed you in this one, and it'll give you a big, huge petal that looks just like this, a spoon. This is the lolly petal. This one takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you've got the hang of it, and which way you actually do like to make it, then um, and then it gets really, really easy. Okay, that's the lolly. The rose petal. The rose petal is very easy. And this is to make the roses. Again, you do not need to heat seal or wood burn. We're not gonna see anything. I have many, many, many tutorials on how to make the rose. Um, the petal is very easy. All you do for the rose, again, 10 by 10 piece. You can even skimp and do nine by 10 if you're low on mesh, or if you're not sure, because sometimes the mesh rolls, they say it's 10 yards, but it's not really 10 yards, and you really need that extra two inches. You won't know that until the end, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I have to open up a whole roll. Um, so sometimes I do skimp and do it nine inches, it won't matter because you won't be able to tell. So for this demonstration purpose, this is 10 inches. All you're gonna do, curl up, take your corner, bring it down to your other corner, and scrunch about two inches up. It gives you an umbrella formation like that, or a stingray, stingray. That's the rose petal, that's it. Um, I find the rose is best made. My favorite uh, rose to do is using 21 inch mesh. And I do it the petal exactly like this, except when I do 21 inch mesh, I fold it and then I fold it back over again and it gives me a lot of mesh. So it's nice and it's got good coverage and it's really color saturated. Um, I would not do a rose with thin mesh. So the cheap, cheap mesh that you literally can see through, if you do a rose with it without doubling each piece, guaranteed you will see through to the board. Even a wire frame, you will see the wire. If you are using a cheaper mesh, like the ombre mesh is absolutely stunning. That would be mesh you would buy from like Hobby Lobby or something. It's gorgeous. However, it's very, very see-through and you have to double each piece. Same with a value mesh, you will have to double each piece. If you do a 21 inch mesh, and I have tutorials on both styles, 21 inch and 10 inch, I have quite a few. Um, you have to really decide what kind of mesh you have and to, to determine how you're gonna make your rows. This is a normal deco mesh but it's a wide foil. It's really, really pretty. If I'm making a, ten, uh, a rose with 10 inch mesh, this and fabric mesh is my favorite to use. It's got a wider foil and it, it hides a lot because of the foil and of course it's sparkly. Um, so you would only need one piece for every zip tie if you're using wide foil mesh. Okay, so you only need two pieces per uh, per petal if you're using value or the cheapy thin mesh. If you're using a fabric mesh, so let's use this green again, because I have it cut. The fabric mesh is my favorite as well to make a rose. Um, it's got great coverage. It gives that nice puffy look that we want. Um, if you use cheaper mesh or if you use if you use a poly burlap to make a rose your rose is going to look like a cinnamon bun I promise because the poly burlap because it's such a stiff plastic will not give you okay so this would be this would be my rose petal do you see how it's like it's flat okay and but once we put it in the rose style it's your edges are going to be flat and poly burlap is expensive. Do not waste your poly burlap in making a rose, okay? 
It just does not look as nice as a deco mesh or a fabric mesh. The fabric mesh, you'll see in a second, will give that nice puffiness. Now this one's been used already, but let me try it the other way. Once I put it in, it gives that nice rounded puffiness and it will stay like that. So once I bring this in and put it into the zip ties, you'll have to watch the tutorial, but it, it gives that puffiness and it doesn't look like a cinnamon bun, okay? So my recommendations for roses is fabric mesh and all our kits, rose kits have fabric mesh because if I like the fabric mesh, then I'm gonna give the fabric mesh to you guys, right? I wouldn't give value mesh in a rose kit if I wouldn't personally use it. And um, a wide foil deco mesh or 21 inch. 21 inch is my absolute favorite for making the rose, but it's more expensive. 21 inch is more expensive. So fabric mesh or wide foil mesh, okay? When searching for wide foil mesh, wherever you are shopping, in the search bar, just type in wide foil. And if they sell it, it will, will come up. Okay, that's the rose. Okay, the next petal we are going to go through is a really, really new petal. I have not done a flower with it, and I did not come up with it. Uh, Melanie Magnalia from Mesh You Up Wreaths. She came up with it from just fooling around with mesh like I do. And she really made a really cool flower with it. Um, uh, she used poly uh, burlap. And what she did is curl up. And she's called this the Bella Petal. Curl up, corner to corner. Okay, we're gonna make this flat. And then she kind of made that invisible line and folded this corner over, just like that. So you got this kind of neat looking V here. And then folded this one over. And what you wanna do is make sure that each of the, or each of these corners are about the same and then she just pinched this and put it in the zip tie and when she filled the large board so she just did the whole thing each normal hole when she filled the whole thing up it was really cool it was this big 3d effect looking thing I don't know what you would call it um, but it was really, really nice. And she used a different color mesh with it. Like I think she used a window pane mesh um, and a solid colored poly burlap. And I really, really liked it. So I, and it's just really, really new. So if you wanna go to Mesh You Up Wreaths, she's done a couple of them already and she explains it really well. So I'm gonna go through it again this is the Bella petal, and I'm sure you'll probably see uh, more of this as time goes on. So you're gonna bring the top corner down to the bottom, okay? And you're gonna fold this over, and then you're gonna fold this one over, almost like napkin folding, because this is how they would fold napkins and you put them in the cup like this at the fancy restaurants. So you almost gotta I don't know what kind of shape that is. And then you just put this tiny little tail into the zip tie. Now I wonder if it looked different. So you could play around because you could put it the other way as well. I bet you that would look really cool too. So she just came up with this with playing with mesh. So you can give it a try and try, give it, you know, do it two both ways. This way, obviously, because it's all facing upwards, will give you a more 3D effect. But I think if you flipped it this way, it would give you a nice, neat effect because you have this really perfect 
uh, shape right there. Anyways, that's the Bella Petal, and I'm sure, we're like I said, we're going to see much more of the be Bella Petal in the next little bit. Okay, so the Bella Petal. And the next one is the Zinnia. Now the Zinnia, I find using deco mesh or poly jute or fabric mesh is the best. Fabric mesh for me, I find is the best for it. Um, this is a bit of a tricky one, not tricky, but um, it actually almost looks like a balloon, okay, when you, when you do do it. And to do it again, 10 by 10, we're gonna use the curl up. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scissor the corner, okay? And this is to do the zinnia petal. And I'm gonna get an elastic out. And of course, I do have a, a video, a couple videos actually, on how to do the whole zinnia flower. This is just right how to do the petal. You're gonna scissor. You're going to bring the top corner over top of your finger. So you have your finger in between these pieces of mesh. Then you're gonna take this corner and you're gonna bring it down to the corner. And what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna wrap it around, okay? And then you're gonna take this and do the exact same thing. You're gonna bring it down to the other corner and wrap it around. And you can see that it makes like a balloon type formation. This is really, this is one of my, I really, really love this flower. I haven't done many of them. I should start doing them again because they're a lot of fun, but they're fun to look at because it gives you so much dimension. And you can just put an elastic at the bottom to make, pre-make a bunch of petals. Okay, and then you would just take, so what you have is you have an indentation on each side and it's all puffy. It's a really, really cool petal. And what you're gonna do then is if you can stick it in uh, with your tail going outwards, because as you fill up, now you're gonna to wanna to start from the center and work your way out for this flower. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick your tail inwards, so from this side, and going towards the outside of the board and zip it up. And as you add more and more petals, let's zip that up. As you add more petals, and I'm doing on the outside, you would start on the inside. The petals will then push each other and form like a big bunch of bubbles <laughs> on your board. It's actually really, really fun and a really cool flower. Check out on our YouTube channel, the hot pink one with yellow center I did, and you'll see what I mean about how fun it looks. It just looks like there's a whole bunch of bubbles on it, and it actually looks like a zinnia flower when it's done. So that one is really cool to make. It's not hard. Um, you just have to have a bit of coordination. And again, use your little elastic bands. You get them for a dollar for 500. They're pennies, like less than pennies each. They will just disintegrate as, uh, uh, in time, but they're so handy to have when you're making wreaths. So again, just to recap, this is the Zinnia. Put your scissors, your finger scissors, bring that over, bring the edge down, and all the corners are matching. They come all together. Bring this one, wrap it around, take this one, wrap it around and you got, it almost looks like a parachute or something, and then put an elastic around it or put it right onto the, into your preloaded zip tied board. Okay, this one's fun. I'm gonna have to redo, I'm gonna have to do another petal like that or another flower like that, it's fun. Let's try it with the poly, or the deco mesh. This is wide foil deco mesh. Again, this is pretty on the deco mesh as well. Again, I would not suggest using poly burlap. A, it's too expensive, and B, you don't need it. Wrap it around, wrap it around. Now the tighter you make your wrapping around, 
the more square you'll make your thing. And by what I mean by that is, so if I take this down and bring it closer in, hold on. The more, the higher I put my elastic, the more square, so the more square my uh, balloon thing looks. Can you see how it's more like squared? Instead the other one was more round. So this is a, a, a this is perfectly acceptable too because it'll make a great flower as long as you do all of them just like that. So it's got more of an indent and it gives it a more square shape. So like I said, pick which one if you want to do this one, pick which one you like and make sure you are continuous with the same petal going all through the flower. And then you would put whatever center you like that um, for a flower. Okay, that one's fun. I like that one. I forgot about that one. Okay, the next one is the peony. The peony, you do need rubber bands, okay? Because the peony, now I'm not doing the flower, this is just the petal. The pea meat, I would, will say, is more for, um, not for beginners. I would work your way up to doing the peony. Unless you just absolutely love peonies, then study it big time. <laughs> okay, so what, the pe what you're gonna do with the peony is again, 10 by 10. And you're going to do it with the curl up, okay? Normally, when we do this kind of thing, we always do it with the curl down. This one, we're going to do it with the curl up and a diamond. And I'm going to pinch all the way up like I've done before. This time, we're going to put an elastic band in here. I've only done a couple of these. And it last last brand broke. Okay. So this is what you have because you're gonna take it so you turn it. Sorry guys, you don't want to put it right exactly in the middle because if you put it right exactly in the middle of that elastic, you're going to see the elastic. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn it and you're going to fold inside that other petal. You're going to fold inside. So you see how it's kind of given a little bit of a gather here. I'm gonna do that again. So I put the elastic band in the middle, but I'm just gonna move it down just a tad. Okay, then you're gonna twist it. Give it one half twist, not all the way around. You're gonna bring this petal down inside the other petal. And it's gonna get, you're gonna kind of wrap that outer petal around the inner petal. Okay, and you're gonna have that gather. And then you're going to like I said this is more advanced but then you're going to scrunch about about two inches up and it gives a cup shaped formation see how it's a cup and it looks like all one piece because the peony and then you're going to put it in I believe you put it in with the tail going outwards because all these pieces fall on top of each other. So if you look at a peony, all the petals go inwards towards the center and it has these little stamen or pistons or pist whatever they're called in the center and all the petals are going forming o over top of these little things that come out. So the whole board is done with this type of petal. 
okay? It's a little tricky, and like I said, it's not for a beginner. It does make a really pretty peony. And let me try it with deco mesh. It might, it might, uh, you might be able to see it better. So again, I'm going to have the curl up, and I'm going to pinch from corner to corner. See how it's going upwards? I think the hardest part is trying to get the elastic on without breaking it. There's got to be an easier way. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Okay, so this is what we have, right? And then what you're going to do is just give it a half twist. And this one is a little smaller than this petal. So the smaller one, I'm going to tuck it down into the larger petal, wrap the larger petal around so it looks like one solid piece. And you can see it's all uh, puckered in there so you don't really see the elastic. And you do about two inches up. So you can pretty much do it with any um, mesh. Again, I would not do it with poly burlap. You could try, but that's, and this one's not heat sealed or anything. So that is the peony. Um, it does make a beautiful, beautiful flower, but like I said, work up to the peony because it, it's a bit tricky on the way you're putting it in and just getting that half twist and putting the elastic on and all that jazz, it, it could get a little frustrating if you are a beginner. If you worked with the boards and you've done all kinds of pedals, um, you will get the hang of this one, no problem, okay? So that's the peony. It almost looks like a spoon, but you need the elastics to get that little pucker at the top and then it all goes in. Okay, so that is the peony. And the Harvey petal, the Harvey petal. The Harvey petal, we named after Rose Harvey. And it's used for all kinds of stuff. You can use this, a bunch of these petals um, for centers. I use it for my big, huge roses with 21 inch mesh. So the way I'm gonna show you with 10 inch mesh, you would do it exactly the same with 21 inch mesh um, and you can make the big rose. Uh, it makes more of a whimsical rose than the other rose I showed you that is just the umbrella shape. Um, this, this, is, this petal is almost like you can fill, use this petal to fill in for anything, literally. And it's very simple, it's 10 by 10 again, and curl up and what you're going to do is I like to do it where I don't see the seam like if you make it this way so you're going to fold it down and you do your finished edges the factory edges together and if you scrunch that's all you do at the bottom is you're scrunching it and it gives you this really cool formation okay almost like a bubble thing and it makes a really fun flower the only thing is when you do it with the factory edges at the bottom you see your cut edges your raw edges so what I like to do is have my raw or my factory edges to the sides bring this down And then just, I start from the center and work my way to the outside. And it's almost like a shell. It looks like a shell. And I put like an elastic on it. If you wanna make a larger Harvey petal, cause you can see this is kind of small. This would be perfect to put a bunch of these in the center to make a center of a flower or just to outline. So you, you go around row four with these petals and then put something in the middle. That's a fun looking flower. If you want a bigger one than this, you would just cut your mesh bigger. So that this one is a 10 by 10 piece. If I cut this, say 15 inches.
fold it over so your factory edges are at the side again and you fold it ever over and match these raw edges together scrunch from one side and then go to the other side you can see you get a much larger petal so you can control the size of this petal just by the length of the mesh that you cut okay so this is a really really fun petal like I said you can do a whole bunch of these and stick them all on the board and it actually looks like a carnation because you, when you stick them onto the board take the board it actually makes an S shape now let me put an elastic around it so this is a multi-purpose kind of um, petal and I've done a flower with all of these just in the center so what you would do is just put your you could do it either way you can put the tail going the outside or the tail going the inside and these would again would stack once they were all in together they would push up against each other and when they push up against each other they make like an S shape like this okay and when you fill this all in with a bunch of the S shapes it forms a carnation it's really really pretty um, and then you would just put some green leaves on the outside and it really does look like a carnation <laughs> it's but it's all just these petals filled up the whole board the same color and like I said once they start stacking with each other they make this S formation and it actually looks like a a uh, carnation but it's a great petal if you don't know what to do to, for a center put four of these not as big you wouldn't use big ones like these you would just use your 10 by 10 ones uh, and put a bunch of these in on oh, my elastics coming out into the center because you can control how big or how little you want them and they'll just make a cute little puffy center so like I said it's a good filler and it's a great petal to just add into a flower to give it some different look or some dimension we're almost done next is the gerbera or gerbera daisy petal this is one of my favorite ones because i also use this petal for the franklin flower and the franklin flower is this petal with ribbons okay so it's a combination of ribbon and deco mesh flower and it's really pretty especially i've done a couple where i've had wreath attachments like an elephant coming out the center so pretty and then like Alabama ribbons coming out of it. So it was an Alabama wreath with the elephant coming out. Fabulous. But I like this for my daisy when I actually do my daisy. So if you buy a daisy kit, this is the petal that you will be shown on the video and on the written instructions. So what you do is you just take your mesh 10 by 10. And this you can cheat as well and do 9 by 10 if you're you know short on mesh because again you won't see anything you do not need to heat seal this is another reason I love this petal you do not have to heat seal this you do not see any of the raw edges all right so what you're gonna do again curl up corner down to the corner I'm gonna stretch it and what I'm gonna do is fold this over and it's almost like the star flower but I'm gonna fold this one over, just a little bit overlapping this one. So the star flower, we went right over and folded it back like that. This one, we're just gonna overlap just a bit, and it actually makes a square. If you can see that, it makes a square. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna scrunch it together. Now this petal, there's your petal, this petal has two different looks you could put it into your board seam with the seam showing or if you don't think you can get your seams all looking the exact same way that's okay flip it over and put your petal in this way 
and then you don't have to worry about all your seams being the center this the, the same so you're going to put your zip tie in your board so you would preload all your board and I say daisy because if you use white with a yellow center with this petal it looks like a daisy if you use pink or purple or whatever and whatever center it actually looks like a gerbera or gerbera or whatever they're called <laughs> but anyways you would just take your tail put it in about half an inch to an inch and pull tight and you'd fill up your whole thing now when you do fill up your wreath boards you, none of the zip ties show because each one layers so you cover all the space on your board and you cover your zip ties as you're layering so this is one of my favorite petals it's very easy and this and the sunflower one is what I tell beginners to start with because um, if you're gonna put it in with the seam down there's you can't go wrong if you put it in with the seam up it does give it a different look but you want to make sure your seams are kind of always the same distance so if you're you can try and put it almost right the edges right together like that and then scrunch it in it gives you a different more rounded look if you can see it, it's more rounded this one you can just play around with and figure out which way you like it for beginners I suggest doing your fold over scrunching it and putting it at seam down very easy petal one of my faves as well so that's the Gerbera daisy petal all right next is the Gigi petal now this I just learned I've never used it before this is Michelle Galnett came up with it and I thought it was really cool now what she did got to remember now so she had her mesh she brought it over then I believe she brought this up to meet the edge like this and then folded it over okay and then she scrunched it and it gives you this kind of rounded looking petal now I'm thinking what would you use that for she started across using this petal and it was beautiful she used this and some ribbon so she just folded over the ribbon which looked like this mesh right when you just fold over ribbon and scrunch it but that's what she used for this Gigi petal and that's what her nickname for her daughter is so again all she did is a 10 by 10 piece she folded it over and met the corners brought the bottom corner up to the edge the, uh, the fold here and then just brought this over like this and scrunched where you can see it kind of goes down like this and scrunched right here I'm pretty sure that's how she did it I think you can open it a bit too if you want but that's the Gigi petal now when she was doing it I really thought she was going to scrunch it in the middle and flip flip it over because that would have made an also a very cool petal flip that over and it's almost like the Rita petal without cutting them both in half so you don't have to twist it or anything because I know with the Rita petal if you wanted all the curves going the same way you you twist it but this one if you just bring it up fold it over and bring that bottom in put it into the so that's what I when I was talking to Michelle Gelnet Gelnet sorry um, 
I said to her when I was watching it, it's like, that actually would be two different petals out of the Gigi. Because you could just now put this right in there. And you have what looks like two Rita petals going the same way. So, what she came up with, I seen a different way. So, that's how coming up with petals works, is just playing around and, you know, when she was folding it to make, uh, like, that rounded thing, I was thinking, oh, what if you scrunched it at the bottom, it would make this kind of petal. So, it does both. So, that, that was really cool. So, that's why I decided I was going to show you guys that one. So, that is called the Gigi Petal. And Gigi is her daughter's nickname. Pretty cool, eh? All right, we're almost done. Next is just a ruffle. Okay, just a simple ruffle. However, when you fill up a Unique in the Creek board with Jeff's ruffles, so you would go d down and up. Now, for this, you would not close your zip ties. So you would preload your whole board open like this. Okay, your zip ties would remain open. You would take your 10 inch piece of mesh like this and you're gonna put it fold down, curl down. You're gonna have your factory seams on the side and what you're gonna do is scrunch up the middle again with your, your um, edges, raw edges downwards and you make a bow tie kind of like a bow right here, okay? Then what you're gonna do is where you pinched in the center, you're gonna put that center right on the board in between your zip tie and zip it up. Okay, this is really good to, if you want to, and I do this a lot, I flip it, I'll show you which way I flip it, but if you filled this whole board with just ruffles, again, it'll make these S shapes the whole board and will look like a carnation, I promise. Ruffle is one of the most um, used, I, I would say most used petals or folds um, in wreathing because um, it's so versatile. Now, when you're doing ruffles, you will see frays. So if you want to heat seal, that's up to you. Um, there's another way to avoid seeing that fray, which we're going to get to on the next one. Um, when I do my ruffles on the board, especially on the character board, I like to do it. I load my board closed. I know when you're doing a ruffle the other way, you leave it open. But what I do is I scrunch up the middle, and this is my favorite way on the character board, and I flip it. I flip that ruffle like that. So you can see you got a double piece here. And what I'll do is I'll put this rounded part right into the zip tie and zip it up. And if you do all of it, it gives it a really great effect and then you can add ribbons and all kinds of stuff to it. It's just a very versatile petal fold or fold period. Okay, that is just the simple ruffle, a 10 by 10. Now, saying that, if you cut a longer piece of mesh, and I think the norm is 30 inches, but you can cut it, let's just do 24. I'm just for teaching sake. We're going to do a 24 inch piece. We are going to do a ruffle, however, if you don't want your edges to show, what you're going to do is you're going to have your curl up, see how it's going to roll like that? What you're going to do is you're going to roll the ends, let me try and get this in there, roll the end, a couple rolls, like a tube, 
and I like to just get a closed pin and then you're going to do it the other side exactly the same give it a couple rolls so now you're hiding that edge that uh, so that you're not going to see your phrase okay and then you're going to scrunch just like the other ruffle to the other end like that and you got a big huge ruffle with the edges hiding and that is called a woodland ruffle okay I call it a kerfuffle I don't know why because it's also called a cruffle um, it's got it's got many names the main name for it is called the woodland ruffle uh, but I think kerfuffle is a lot more fun but that's and you would just put that in the middle of your zip tie and pull it up and it makes a beautiful you can also do the same way I do turn it that's a lot of mesh to put in there so you kind of waste you don't need that much mesh to do that flipped way that I do it um, but that's the woodland ruffle a lot of people that are wreathers experienced wreathers they won't even bother with the clothes pins they'll just roll it and then gather right up the center and then that's their ruffle whatever works for you this one you know just rolling it in and then ruffling it or bringing it to the center is a lot easy a lot easier but you don't get the length consistency unless you're a really good practiced uh, wreather I don't particularly use this method quite a lot so mine's a little jacked up here but you guys get the gist of it though it's a ruffle you just have to cut it longer and roll the uh, edges in okay so that's the woodland ruffle and the last one I have on my list I probably have missed some so if I did I apologize I tried to think of everything all the ones that I could think of um, this petal I use I make I love to make use this for my Christmas trees it's really easy so you would fill up your whole board with your whole tree board with zip ties so all the holes would be closed so loaded closed okay just like that so you would have it all filled and what you're going to do is going to take your 10 inch piece so 10 by 10 and what you're going to do is just start at the corner i'll start at this one since it's all and you just roll you don't have to t roll tight just roll and this is what you get long piece and all you have to do is flip it i try to make sure when i flip it that they're both the same size lengthwise and this folded part you just stick in there and there you go when you fill this whole tree or triangle form up with these it makes an exquisite christmas tree um, you can use different meshes with it so if you used this is a fabric mesh if i used this and then the next row i used a metallic uh, pine colored mesh and then fabric pine or uh, metallic fabric metallic it's gorgeous so it's very very simple all you do is roll it and try to keep the same roll consistent you know it's nobody will see that you you know one's tighter than the other but once you start making your rolls you kind of get the feel of how you're rolling it so if you're going to roll it super super tight like this a, it'll take you longer but if that's how you choose to do it a it won't give you a lot of coverage and it'll take you more time but if you're gonna do it like this do the whole thing like that okay I wouldn't suggest rolling it tight like this it, it won't, just won't look as nice as just a nice easy la -di da roll <laughs> like that it's about an inch wide my roll that's my roll is about an inch wide okay and then you're gonna just flip it 
make sure your edges are the same and stick it into your zip tie. All right, I think I've gone over most of it. I'm sure I'm missing some, but hope, hopefully you guys learned a bit from this and it will help you when you're making your flowers. Um, it may help you coming up with your own flower. Like I said, combine different petals and you'll come up with something really fun and unique. And that's the only way we come up with new things is doing stuff like this. So um, have fun. If you need to go through it, you have the ability to stop, play with your mesh, continue on with this video, rewind it, whatever. Um, I would love for you guys to, if you haven't already, to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook and continue following us because we always come up with some really, really cool ideas. Okay guys, thank you again. My name is Lori Franklin and I am the owner of Unique in the Creek. Have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.